Hello there, sword friends. This review, not review, but random chatty chat chat video is a little bit overdue. I have two Albion Type 14 swords, and I personally absolutely love the look of both of these swords, particularly this one, which I have lusted over for a very long time and have been fortunate enough to have in my collection and possession for, I don't know, around a year or so. But uh, the point is I haven't talked about these swords, even though I have a lot of interest in them. And recently I brought them out and I measured them and I compared them, and I just want to share the differences between two Albion Type 14 swords and kind of give you my impressions. Now this isn't strictly a review because I'm not going to be cutting, destroying, or really doing much and I have very little historical perspective to offer and I also, as many of you know, do not study historic European martial arts. So in terms of how these swords are used, um, I, I really don't have much idea specifically speaking. Um, also I don't have the component piece, I don't have the buckler that would be used to kind of practice and so moving these around at pace or with intent is, is only something I can kind of really do well, I can't really do effectively. I can cut, I can move it the way I would, I can give you my impressions as a sword practitioner, but not one that studies particularly how to use the tool that these were, were intended for. And I'll give you my novice observations and, and that's about it. But um, I expect a visual tour of both. So I will, I will give my thoughts on both the Albion Sovereign and on the Albion Sheriff, and those are, those are what you will find here in this, in this video. Uh, links to the Weapon Dynamics computer as well as specifics on these swords uh, will be included in the description down below. So if you're sick of hearing me talk, you can just go look there for all the information. I'm going to jump in here real quick and point something out that you're going to hear throughout the course of this video, and that is a lot of clicking in the background, and I am sorry for that, but I'm not really all that sorry. So uh, also, please excuse my bed head here. Uh, gamer Girl back here was jamming out on some Stardew Valley or some Minecraft or something that involved a profuse amount of clicking, and I noticed it while I was in the course of editing. But uh, my daughter keeps me company. She's awesome, and I'd rather have her here clicking in the background, motivating me to continue talking about swords than not. So yeah, I'm sorry, but not, not all that sorry. Anyway, that's what it is. Just an FYI. One other quick note, these are both secondhand swords. I did not buy them directly from Albion. I've gotten them, again, both secondhand, and because they are in, <laughs> well, they were full of oil and stuff, I've cleaned them off and I've taken a brief application of flit, so they're probably marginally more shiny than you would expect to get them from Albion, but only slightly slow. I, I did it to kind of take off any surface rust that I was able to see or able to take off, though both of them do have rust, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, the features of the swords. So this is the Sheriff right here, this this one right here, and I'm going to start with the pommel. So it's got a simple wheel pommel. Now in this example, the edges are not terribly crisp. Normally that's something I would harp on, but I will talk about them uh, and why I think this is, is maybe preferential actually, at least this level of crispness uh, in comparison to the Sheriff. If I look at the peen over here, it's got a very well done peen. It's pretty simple, pretty even, no really overly aggressive hammer marks or anything like that. Also, if we look at the peen, it's not just one kind of cast eye. You can see that it kind of tapers in slightly, so it's wider where it meets the grip, and then it tapers down where the peen is. Um, I like that level of dimension, even on something relatively relatively simple like, like this piece here. It's also not completely cylindrical. It's like a little slightly smushed circle, but mostly it's cylindrical. One thing I want to point out is where the grip meets the fitting. So the, the pommel area and where the cross guard meets. These are transitions I think are really, really well done. There's a slight lip uh, for the leather piece, but it's not, it's not significant. There's no lacquer or gunk buildup around the area. It's a very clean transition. Nothing bites my hands. There's no unsightly gaps or anything like that. I think this is an absolutely excellent transition between the grip and fittings. The grip itself, all of these little indentations where the twine bound the leather as it was as curing or hardening are great and they're, they're symmetrical. There's not a lot of I don't know, there's nothing to really complain about, no imperfections that I'm able to spot. There is a very slight seam, which you might be able to make out in the right light, but I can't feel it with my hand um, unless I really, really search for it, and even then only in some spots and not where my hand would grip. Maybe underneath here I can feel it slightly, but not, not really. So overall the, the grip, very well done here. It has two risers, and some people do criticize, I believe, the Albion uh, grips are built with a wooden core over the tang. They might be filled with some resin or epoxy or something to fill in the gaps, but then they're not bound in twine. They're, they're, they have leather glued on from my understanding, and then they are wrapped in twine to kind of give this visual effect, but they don't have twine underneath them, which may be more historic and maybe a more secure mechanical connection. That said, I don't know of anyone complaining about the Albion 
piece and they are also CNC machines so uh, if you are if you're trying to get a historic piece then that's not necessarily it if you want something that is aesthetically appealing and durable um, these these do seem to meet the the need other notes on the grip you can see the the tapering is just really well done there's there's more dimension here it swells in the middle it has a more ovoid shape here tapers down to more cylindrical at the base and then uh, and then there's that so I mean it's not just a plain wooden grip I guess I would say there's there's a little bit more to it and hopefully hopefully my video moving on to the cross guard again I mentioned these transitions I think are really quite good but you can just see that the ledges are are very subtle on this now it's it, it's jarring to me when one like the pommel is really crisp and clean and sharp and then it transfers down into something that's a little more subtle but these are at least consistent in kind of their finish level these ledges aren't particularly sharp they're very soft and feel feel quite nice uh, these ledges aren't particularly sharp but overall they're even they have dimension there's no surface ripples or anything in them which hopefully you're able to to see um, little things like that, the little finishing levels are, are something that Albion is, is really well known for and there's certainly no exception here. Even in this perhaps generally simplistic looking sword, just the overall finish level is, is certainly something that you can appreciate. Again, I'm looking for surface ripples in here, I'm looking for gunk stuck somewhere, I'm looking for ledges or um, kind of disproportionate tool marks and all of it seems very, very consistent, very symmetrical. Uh, very very good it's a machine made piece and and there's some of that but it doesn't it just kind of gives the impression of well made rather than machine stamped to me again one point that I like on Albion something that maybe is more nitpicky but the spot where the cross guard meets the hilt all of these gaps are very very tight you can see there's there's a minimal gap where the fuller meets but even that is um, is, is relatively small the gap which has no in no attempt to <laughs> to meet the fuller is still tighter than uh, many swords are around the entirety of of the cross guard where the blade meets so this is this is uh, one of the better examples of Albion's work if I do say so the the gap here is very very small uh, if at all it looks like maybe a little bit on the ledges here maybe a, a millimeter millimeter and a half all right, let's talk about the blade, the pointy, pointy, stabby part. So I'm going to include specifics and measurements and all of that down below. Suffice to say, you're not going to be able to see it here, but there is a distal taper to this blade, uh, and the polish level, you should know, is also probably marginally sheenier or marginally more shiny than you would expect to get from Albion, but only slightly slow. So again, I took it, I gave it a slight application of Flitz, which is a high-grade metal polish, and so that that is going to... I tried not to really dig it in. I tried to apply it very lightly just to give it some subtle... Uh, surface rust removal because sometimes that builds up as these are displayed open in my home um, so it might be marginally shinier but generally Albion has a very subtle kind of satin polish I think they use a scotch pad number one is the finish which is akin to a 600 or 800 grit if you will so it's not terribly sharp this one doesn't have a very pronounced central ridge and so it, it goes to a flat section here the one thing I don't particularly like, which is probably very historic, um, but I don't like how this fuller just kind of transitions off gradually into nothing, and then also does it over here. But you can kind of make out in the light that one is finishing up here, and the other is finishing a little further down, maybe a quarter inch or, or so further down and a little crisper. They don't kind of transition off in exactly the same way. They're not perfectly symmetrical in that regard, which is odd for Albion. I don't know if it's odd in the fuller section, or at least in the fuller termination, but one thing I find aesthetically unpleasing is how these fullers terminate. Uh, if they were going to do it the same way exactly, that would be one thing, but these appear to be terminated marginally differently. Uh, the satin polish is not bad, and also one thing I want to point out is the flats in this blade are, are pretty even and crisp. I don't know if my camera is going to show it terribly well here, but uh, suffice to say the surface ripples, when I talk about that, the, the ripples along the surface are overall pretty clean. The sharpness level on this blade is Albion sharp, if you will. By that I mean it's not not very sharp at all. Also, it's secondhand, so I can't really complain. I've teetered on the idea of sharpening one of these. I don't know if I'm going to keep two different Type 14 blades. Um, I definitely know I want to keep the Sovereign. I got the Sheriff before I got the Sovereign, uh, and I thought, oh, once I got the Sovereign, I'm going to want to get rid of the Sheriff, but I, I like the Sheriff, so 
Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But um, either way, this is pretty insufficient for tatami cutting or anything that I intentionally try to cut or have fun with. This blade does not, not really do sufficiently. I've tried cutting with it once at a cutting party. It did not go terribly well. It's a fun blade to move around physically, but in terms of cutting, uh, not, not so much. And that's largely due to the sharpness and my ineptness with the blade. I'm sure if I brought it to harder targets, you know, if I tried to whack it into a tree branch or if I tried uh, a sapling or something like that, it would probably suffice. But on the, the targets that really require an edge and some bite, it does not do very well. It just flops tool pool noodles around and it, uh, it doesn't do much. In terms of the thrust and point control, it's very good, but honestly, I, I have no competency in saying how good or bad it is uh, because I don't study the martial art that involves it. That said, I do feel like it has a lot of point control and it's it's pretty comfortable sword in comparison. Now, I've had a couple other Type 14 swords and I would say that the Sheriff is probably my favorite. I'll elaborate on that in just a little bit, at least in terms of dynamics and how it felt. I've had the uh, the arms and armor iteration from Henry V, which is similar in look. It doesn't have the fuller. Uh, that felt quite a bit heavier. I haven't played with their hollow ground iteration as much, but this this feels uh, like a very, like it doesn't murder my shoulder. It's comfortable enough. It still wears me out, believe it or not, as I was taking the measurements and doing the dynamics computer, you kind of have to hold it and wiggle it. It, it still wears my shoulder out trying to hold it with two fingers and uh, jitter it back and forth. That's one of the ways I take the measurements. Uh, but in terms of moving it around, uh, it, it feels pretty comfortable, and I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. Anyway, that's the visual tour of the Sheriff, if you will. Hopefully it's been helpful enough. I've, I've shown you some of the details of the sword. It's overall a very pretty sword, and the measurements should give you a better idea of how it's going to feel in your hand specifically. I'm going to move on to the Sovereign now. Well, here we go, the Albion Sovereign. This is a sword that I lusted after for quite a while. It reminds me a lot of the sword from the Sword in the Stone, even though as I look at them side by side, it, it doesn't look at all like it. But it's got a big, uh, I don't know, wide blade in it. I don't know, it's cool looking. To me, this is one of my favorite aesthetic swords. I think I would like the one without the brass pommel a little bit. Also, no, I've shined this pommel up. I took flits to it, and I don't think Albion sends this out with a glowy, shiny, uh, brass pommel, but it will age. It's easy to sand down. Anyway, this one has has been a little more sheenier than I expected it to be, and that certainly wasn't the way it came. Mine also came with some little talismans or little adornments inside, and I had to scrape those out along with the glue, so it's a little more haphazardly cleaned in this area than perhaps Albion would of the gate. Anyway, the Sovereign itself is, I just think, an absolutely beautiful looking sword. It's my favorite sword in terms of aesthetics from Albion. I, I love the way it looks, and I hoped I would love the way it feels, and initially I would say I did. Um, and, and just taking the sword out and moving it around, it is a comfortable, nimble, fun sword to hold and move, and I can't say that initially I had any comparison or, or problems, but as soon as I did a comparison between the Sheriff and the Sovereign side by side, and felt which one I liked, that, that's when I suppose I noticed that I it was not my favorite, and but I'll elaborate on that when I when I show you that information or show you that footage. Anyway, let's do a visual tool, tour of the Sovereign. Uh, again, dynamic specifications all in the description down below. We'll start with the peen. One notable difference between the two is that this has a quarter inch uh, peen block on it here. A quarter inch measured from the, the tip of this to the top of this, so kind of the shortest distance between the two, if you will. But uh, in a nutshell, quarter inch peen block. You can make out the uh, tang of the blade, kind of in this area here. It's smooth. I can't feel any transition or ledge in this area, but an aesthetic piece that seems pretty well done. Again, this pommel has been shined up and also has a few kind of scratches in the surface of this little inset area that were likely not there. Mine had some talisman pieces and I pulled them out uh, to do measurements just to make sure that as I was giving you information, I was doing it as close to the factory and that, you know, even though those only might be half an ounce or, or less, uh, that still may impact dynamics, and I, I thought I would take them out. So all the measurements of Schnoop were taken, not in the sword with, not the sword that I got that had the little bits in it or glue or anything like that. I took all that out prior to taking measurements. Little closer look. Now obviously again, mine is shined up that bears repeating because I don't think the one from Albion comes this way. It has an inset here. These ledges are not sharp, but they're not dull either. And overall the lines on this are, are actually pretty crisp and clean. And that's one thing aesthetically that contributes to my love of the sword. Also, uh, again, you notice that this is not just a perfect cylinder here. It has a slight, what appears to me to be a very slight taper where it is thicker at the base and thinner towards where the peen block is. Ever so slightly it seems canted in, but not a lot, and it's a subtlety that I appreciate in Albion's design and execution. 
Moving on to the grip, it seems more like the Sheriff, just better. It has these risers, but again, uh, swells in the center, ovoid shape towards the cross guard, more cylindrical at the base, but not quite. It has a, it's thinner here than it is down here. It has depth, even though it's very simple. I don't make out any kind of schmutz or yucky stuff on the cross guard. The transitions all look really good. I don't feel any leather or anything like that where the grip meets and the, the, uh, the kind of pattern left by the twine used seems overall perfect with very little deviation at all. It seems really, really well executed, an excellent looking grip. Uh, these three risers are featured pretty prominently and I can certainly feel them in my hand as I move it around. They're not certainly, they're not just cosmetic, I certainly can feel them as I move the sword around. Let's move on to the cross. You can see this transition. You can also probably notice where I've cleaned it and where some of the original kind of sheen is, but it's, it's not a gigantic difference. Now, the cross guard on this is a little different. You can notice it, it kind of swells out into what appear to be octagonal shapes, but they have dimension. Now, having once attempted to make a very simple cross guard, executing on these lines, even to clean them up with a sander after casting, must be, must be quite an ordeal to keep straight. And this is, this is straight. Um, if I look at kind of just how the light plays on the sword, you don't see any ripples in the surface. Overall, it's just extremely well finished and done. The central ridge is very prominent. It's even and well cast. Uh, these octagonal uh, quillions here kind of taper, taper off into pretty much nothing, but uh, they remain detailed and have some of the facets on them all the way until the very until the very tip, and they seem to be pretty even in that execution. Um, I don't notice any lines or imperfections or kind of spots where one side is much larger than the other. Overall, it seems extremely well executed and a, and a very, not, not perfect, but about as close to it as, as you can hope to get. One other note as I talk about the grip here, I do want to point out where my measurements were taken as you look at the specifics down below, if you have any interest. There's a prominent central riser here, which aesthetically is very pretty, but does give some question into where I measure from the guard. So the blade length was kind of taken from this shortest spot here, as was the, the hilt measurement. So I measure the hilt from, from here rather than this uh, tip point right here. Uh, the blade, all the way down to where the blade, the longest part of the blade, the hilt, I'm kind of not counting this little extra nubbin up here in terms of the hilt length, if any of that matters to you. But seeing as how it can add a quarter inch, it might have some impact on how you feel, especially as the differences dynamically between these two, I, cer I, th I certainly think arguably is going to be subtle, um, You, that might make a difference to you. Anyway, enough of that. The gap in the cross guard. Now this is not as good an example, I think, as the sheriff is. This has a larger gap around it. It has more imperfections. It's certainly not as crisp and clean. Um, the two fuller area here presents a much larger gap in either of these, but just generally how it fits around is uh, slightly wider. This is certainly an example of good. It's not, it's not at all a bad fit, but it is not as clean as the sheriff example is. Still uh, gets gets high praise. It's still kind of top notch, but not not as tight. Not as I can't fit anything in between here. I might be able to fit floss or a toothpick in there, um, <laughs> which is, can be handy for cleaning. But uh, but overall, it's just marginally bigger. Now I'm going to move on to the blade pointy pointy stabby part. Worth noting, uh, width is actually very similar between the two blades, at least where they meet at the cross. Uh, they both have these shoulders where they're they're wide for about an inch and then begin tapering down. And I've taken two measurements. One at the closest point to the cross and then 17 inches up, which is approximately where the fullers end. They both end a little further out by less than an inch, say, but probably closer to a half an inch. And I'll show you the termination of the fullers on this as well. But no, I measure the point uh, thickness and width at the base and then 17 inches up, which is approximately where the fullers end on, on both of these examples. Blades, really, we have a lot of similar finish level here. This one has got a satin finish and it's relatively simple. The blade profiles do not look that different. The tip profile, not that different, though they are both modeled after Type 14 swords. Um, the fuller termination, which I have highlighted in the light here, is one, again, point, I, just a, a sticking point for me. Um, this looks clumsy to me. It, it's just not as good. It kind of models off on one. The two fullers that are sitting next to each other are not even. You can see one tapers off gently more than the other. Uh, as does does this side. This is even muddier and, and a little even, a little clumsier even. It's just not, 
not what I would call an example of crisp or clean fuller termination, which I find even less appropriate given that two of them are sitting next to each other and terminate differently. Uh, these, these should be, I think, better fit. Now, in the medieval period, I've, I've seen a couple examples of historic medieval swords. This is certainly within the reason of period. Uh, it's, it fits within the realm of classic swords. It's not, uh, it, it's not that it wouldn't fit in in the period in time. So if you were to take a little medieval sword, uh, the idea of symmetry is different and the, the termination on fullers can muddy off and they can terminate in different spots and that's not weird for a medieval sword. But this is a machine-made sword with some hand-finished sanding and some kind of hand-finished grinding. Uh, but these are largely cut out on a CNC mill and then kind of finished by hand. And I think the, the idea of Albion is, is not necessarily perfection, but people are are expecting a, a more symmetrical, more machine-made appearance than you would be generally. And that's why um, I like as, the aesthetics of, of symmetry. I like it when they're, they're crisp and clean, and th this is not crisp and clean in my mind. And one deterrent, one thing that really stands out, it's right at my eye level as well when I pull the thing out, and it just it looks a little finger painty. And one reason I'm not a big fan of this, this particular Sovereign. They don't all look like this, though. I think I just might have gotten a dud. Though I don't think... Albion exactly makes does. They're pretty particular about the quality control coming out of the shop. Uh, just this is one subtlety that I think I think got missed. Now, if I close my eyes to the fuller, the rest of it is absolutely fantastic. I like how crisp the center ridge is. I like how it transitions to a flattened cross section here. Um, but this crisp center ridge next to the the two fullers is great. I like how it lines up both with the, the nubbin in the center. It's pretty easy for these cross guards to go off kilter when you pound them on like this, but it's centered in both cases, and it's it's an absolutely beautiful center line. Um, also, planes in the blade, equally good. The grinding on this, I think, is, is good. There's There are surface ripples, it's not perfect, but I would say overall, it's, it's actually quite good. There's not a pronounced amount of surface ripples or anything like that. Sharpness, again, secondhand sword. Can't say how sharp it was when it came out of the box, but they're about equivalent. One side is, is oddly sharper than the other, but I would call it Albion sharp as in. I wouldn't want to get hit with it, but it's not, it's not going to be an effective competition cutter. It has the profile, too. There's no pronounced secondary bevel anywhere on it, but um, the profile just does not lends itself to taking an edge really well but does not come with one out of the box. And having talked to uh, Mike at Albion, he said he doesn't make them razor sharp. If you want to sharpen it, you can, but it's tough to, to warranty an edge. Um, they're, they're easily rolled, deflected, broken. You know, even, even in doing some of the basic cutting you might have, even on a water bottle, the top of those things can be pretty tough. You go to whack a water bottle, you hit kind of the top section where the plastic is thick or the cap, and, uh, and a really fine razor edge can roll. And that's, that's something that's tough if you're trying to run a business that sells thousands of swords and trying to warranty them and be a reputable dealer. So I, I can understand the logic, um, but it does mean that if you want a really sharp sword, if you want to do competition cutting, you're probably going to have to take care of that part of it yourself, which means an extra investment on an already relatively expensive sword. Anyway, there's your visual tour of the Sovereign, something I will admit if I... If I look past the folders, which are hard because they're always right in front of my face, uh, I really love the aesthetic look of. I kind of want to try and get a second one just to see how it goes. All right, now I want to talk about the experience of moving both of these swords around. So I brought them out and I realized this is not a fair comparison. One, I'm not a, I'm not a practitioner, but two, I'm not even practicing with all the equipment. Ideally, you would have some sort of shield or buckler or something like that uh, to, to use. This is half the system. and acknowledged, but I took both of them out, did some basic swinging as a, as a novice, and I can give you my observations there. And that is that the Sheriff, to me, is the 10 out of 10 winner. Well, not 10 out of 10, call it 9 out of 10. The Sovereign felt interesting when I had my thumb on the little riser section. It gave me an additional feeling of purchase, but I honestly had to move the sword kind of off alignment in order to really take advantage of that. That said, when I was moving the Sovereign around, my hand wore out. I certainly feel the additional weight that is in this blade that, uh, that I did not expect to be as pronounced. Uh, this is two pounds, eight ounces-ish, and this is two pounds, almost 12 ounces-ish. So, and that, that difference, again, I don't know, maybe I'm misquoting, but the details are below. The Sovereign is heavier, and I certainly feel it. It certainly feels more cumbersome, especially as you compare them next to each other. To me, it felt like trying on two pairs of shoes, and one of them fit really well, and one did not. And so moving this around, I immediately felt fatigue kind of in, in the palm of my hand, these sharp ledges which I appreciate the aesthetic of, but immediately kind of regret when it comes to them 
you know, jub <laughs> jamming into my hand as I try to stop the sword and control it. Uh, and as this is a, a weapon that, as I understand it, you are kind of throwing it out there, but you're, you're keeping it out there and guarding your hand with a buckler. I, I may be misunderstanding the art, but um, you're going to want to keep this point in front of your opponent. So you're throwing it out there, and this pommel is going to be interacting with the palm of your hand quite a bit. And it doesn't, well, it feels secure in my hand. It feels like I can control it. It's not a bad or dead or uncomfortable sword. It certainly is not the same as the sheriff. As soon as I put this in my hand, those kind of soft ledges rub in all the same spots, but in a way that's much less painful. Uh, the weight and dynamics, even though they're very, very similar, uh, become pretty apparent that I would prefer this one as, as a weapon. If I had to grab one of these off the wall to use, it would be the sheriff, absolutely no question. Granted, I would hopefully have sharpened, <laughs> sharpened it before that. Uh, but yes, the sheriff. So uh, I, I do prefer that, at least those are my thoughts. But my thoughts are only so much. Again, I've, I've mentioned kind of the, the limitations I have as a, as a reviewer in this regard, and I know that many of you might be interested because it fits in within a particular martial system, and Albion has pretty good dynamics. So if you're interested, hopefully the weapon dynamics computer, the measurements, help you in deciding which one is going to be a better fit for you. I do also want to note that those risers in the center, my big giant sausage hands, I like those. They fill my palm up really well, they don't break my grip. I do like the central risers, but it's just, it's just kind of how this pommel jumps in my hand is, is uncomfortable. That's, that's the real clincher here. The weight I might be able to deal with, but the way this is rubbing on my hand and, and causing pain is not, not one that I want to keep using, personally. And it's not because it's sharp or causing me to bleed. It's just the ledges are crisp and they dig into my palm in, a, in the wrong way, especially if I, no matter how I move it, if I keep edge alignment, it just causes me discomfort. So the Sovereign is, is not, not one that likes me back. Maybe it will change with lots of use, but I, I can't see it. This is, this is how you swing the sword, at least as I understand. It's not, it wants to hurt me. All right, so those are my thoughts on the sword. One other thing I want to point out that I don't think gets enough attention when it comes to Albion is the maintenance and care. And Albions, beyond any other sword, I have difficulty keeping rust off of. They rust, they have a propensity to do it relatively quickly. I oil them frequently, but still uh, little imperfections start to show up. Maybe this is just my, my oils or my, my level of care, but here's a little spidery bit of rust that has started to show up on the on the cross guard of the sheriff this wasn't here and I've polished it off I imagine I could sand it down or something and get rid of it but here's a, an example of a little one that's creeping up along the surface you may be able to notice little little bits of spotting they're tough to see but they're they're certainly there um, along the ledge here kind of right where my thumb is peeking up you can make out some surface rust if I can get it in the camera and the Sovereign is realistically no different um, I do take them off, I clean them if I see surface rust I try to polish them and by that I mean I take a slight application of Mother's Mag or Flitz or um, Neverdoll and I rub until I see the surface rust kind of come away and if there's pitting underneath I can't do much about that I don't I don't really make much attempt to I think I'm gonna buy some scotch pad number one and and try to kind of scrape a layer off if you will and hope that I can get rid of more of of the minor pitting and stuff that I'm beginning to see but one thing I want to point out about both of these swords is that I do have them hanging up on display um, above above where I edit this stuff I see them and I like them probably displayed but uh, they rust very easily, so just bear that in mind as you look at Albion's that I keep them in a, in a coat of CLP that I reapply every one to three months, and that is apparently not enough. It's a pretty good coating metal. I don't have problems with L6 or very other rust-prone blades, but these Albion's uh, tend, to, tend to just want to wanna rust no matter what I do, and it could be where they're displayed, uh, but I've had them on walls where there's less activity, less potential for, you know, the me talking or, or some minor uh, water particles to get on them and, and they still tend to, to rust. So maybe it's just the area, but these Albions are the, the ones that I seem to have the most trouble with keeping clean, the most trouble with, with rust on. And I don't think they're made out of anything magical or special. It's just something about them 
just the, even the rust is attracted to him. What can I say? Anyway, those are my thoughts on the swords. Give you a visual tour. I don't know much about history, but if you know how these things are used from a historical perspective or a martial perspective today, have some interesting links you'd like to share, throw them in the comments down below. I'm certainly interested in seeing it. Uh, if there's something else you would like me to do or see with these swords, I, I am happy to in the realm of possibility, but I don't want to break them because I like them. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. Hopefully the video is interesting. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.